today. You've got a little story for us. I've got a little story for us. A little perspective story, right? Yes. Are you someone that walks into an elevator and doesn't think twice or someone that has minuscule thoughts about all the inner workings of the man-made device there's this doubt and lack of trust then this work to try to convince yourself you're gaslighting yourself in a way (laughs) yeah to overcome a fear that i have we don't all think the same the more we get to know thyself in those types of ways of being we also help our root causes Welcome to Love Always Self. I'm Shira. Hello, I am Karista, and welcome to Love Always Self. Thanks for joining us on this episode today. I know. We are actually just rolling on through from the last episode (laughs) straight into the recording of this one. Yeah, I've got a trip coming up, which means that we got to do things a little ahead of time. (laughs) So doing a little solo road trip. I'm super excited about it. (laughs) Oh, I'm so excited for you. Just a girl and her dog. (laughs) That's going to be amazing. I'm going to need a lot of photos Mm -hmm. and a lot of videos Mm -hmm. and a shared location. (laughs) Uh, I think I already shared my location. (laughs) <laughs> so I haven't turned that off yet. And um, you'll have to remind me to do that when I get back. Right. What are friends for? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't stalk you. It's cool. <laughs> it's fine if you did. Yeah. I am going to stalk you while you're gone. But other than that, you're going to be fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Today, you've got a little story for us. I've got a little story for us. A little perspective story, right? Yes. Yes. I uh, And and it's a, it's a bit of a ponder. Mm-hmm. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, my husband and I were watching this conversation. It was a very fascinating conversation. I think the guy's name is Brett Weinstein. I don't remember who the host was of the episode, but like, anyway, it was a very fascinating conversation. Three hours. Hmm. We had to break it up. It, I think it took about almost two days for us to get through that entire yeah. um, like podcast episode or whatever. But at one point in time, they're discussing things like a lot of things. And as they're discussing, I had this like thought that popped in my head and I could tell, you know how like you, when you're in the room with somebody and you both want to say something or comment on something, mm-hmm. you can just kind of tell like what's going on. And, and I knew I had a thought and he had a thought. And so I stopped him and I said, hold on, I have to write this thought down and then you can continue. And so I, What I wrote down, I'm going to read to you guys. And what he responded with, I'm going to read to you guys. Your husband. Right. Okay. So I wrote down, are you someone that walks into an elevator and doesn't think twice? Or someone that walks into an elevator and has minuscule thoughts about all the inner workings of the man-made device that is holding you up in the air in midair and at the same time raising you below and above and with ease and most likely lack of extreme jolt. So that's the hope. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But but it was just this ponder that was happening in my head. Like how do you how do you perceive that that moment walking into an elevator? Like what are your thoughts? Right. Yeah. Because for me When I walk into an elevator, because I have had a previous very scary experience, Mm -hmm. when I walk into an elevator, sometimes my first thought is I'm going to push this button and I'm going to assume I'm going to get down to the first floor. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm coming in from a higher floor or whatever, which this is a daily experiment for me, by the way, Mm -hmm. when I go to work. Mm -hmm. And there is a small moment of fear followed by a small moment of relaxation that I'm forcing myself into. Mm. So there's like this doubt and lack of trust. Right. And then this work to try to convince yourself you're gaslighting yourself in a way (laughs) yeah, to overcome a fear that I have. (laughs) Right. Because Mm -hmm. it's part of my self-awareness exercise that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Right. And and part of my, my way of, of letting go and trusting that everything's going to work out the way it's supposed to, regardless of the outcome. (laughs) Flow state. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And, and so I, I said, I'm going to read this to you and I'm very curious how you're going to respond to this. Steven. Steven. And so I asked him and the response was, 
I'm the person who walks into the elevator and quickly looks for the phone box, looks at the ceiling, wondering if there's an escape patch above, looks at the people getting into the elevator with me to see if there's a threat. What's foremost in my mind is if I'm stuck in the elevator, how quickly can I get out? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, whoa, you're going into protective mode. Mm Mm-hmm. Your instincts of going into an elevator is a point of protecting. You see, though, they're both survival techniques. Yes. So what you experience and what Steven experiences are both survival. Right. Now, the man does have a few years on me in life. In yeah. General. But I mean, but I, I have the same reaction. Like if, if I step into an elevator, you know, I, I find I look for the call button when I'm pressing the button, like as I'm walking in though, first, is there anybody else in there with me? If there is, are they male or female? How are they appearing to me? So I am making assumptions based on appearances. You know, do they appear to be a threat? How do I position myself in the elevator to protect myself as best as I can? So standing near the buttons. Yeah. Like, it's it's all survival like exit strategies this is this is what's intriguing me the most too is that there are most days where i am overcoming a fear Mm -hmm. but there are also days where i go into this like man it's pretty cool that someone came up with an an idea that translated into the mechanics of holding this amount of weight if it's full elevator versus just me just yeah. me by myself but the the frame of the device itself that's lifting me up and down like the pulley system right. putting it to use in this fashion that it feels really smooth that it comes to a slow gradual stop and then this beautiful door just which i'm always happy about yeah. opens thank god thank god <laughs> uh just opens really smoothly and and closes really smoothly like all these inner workings mm-hmm. are happening and somewhere down the line all these individuals came together to put their education and expertise and design into one thing mm-hmm. that assists the rest of us so <laughs> there's that thought process I have a similar thought process when I'm driving home. I always, every day I see airplanes and I'm always fascinated. Just like, isn't that really incredible that we created that? (laughs) (laughs) But, but then I had this thought after, after he gave me his and I said mine and I started pondering on all these things. I had this thought in my, in my head. I was like, is there anyone that gets in the elevator and doesn't think about anything at all besides their destination? Or like what's going on in their head? Like right. no thoughts about the elevator whatsoever kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Probably. Probably. It, it's it's interesting when you stop and really like consider all these different ways that people respond to these situations. And so none of them are wrong. None of them are right. They mm-hmm. just are. Right. They are just the way we think or the way that we have learned to think. Yeah. And everybody's just a little bit different. There are some like commonalities, but it just leads me to be more aware that we shouldn't necessarily assume what other people are thinking, feeling, experiencing just because we are thinking, feeling, experiencing one thing does not mean you are. Yes. It, it is fascinating to me because on top of all of that, on top of the the one thing that you said just a minute ago is something that I've been pondering about with this, you know, elevator thing, scenario. Elevator scenario, right. Is, is that every single person that has gotten into an elevator that has whatever thoughts that they're having, none of them are bad. None of them are, are good. It, it just is, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There, there's not a whole lot of time in those moments. So it is just, it's a neutral situation altogether, mm-hmm. which means we all have that in common, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool, which means we're all capable of that, mm-hmm. which is even cooler, right? Are you talking about capable of the finding the neutrality? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, 
And then even more so is that all of our thoughts that are happening in those moments, in those very small moments, minuscule moments, like as I wrote it, all of that has a powerful um, feeling within, Mm -hmm. right? Because it's gathered from all of these experiences that you've had Mm -hmm. previously to that moment of getting into an elevator on how you are perceiving your situation or thinking about how to handle that situation. Right. Which is just fascinating. It's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And it's developed not even by your own experiences, but also shared experiences too. Because I can't say that I've ever, I, I can't think of a time where I've actually been in a situation where I've been in danger in an elevator. But I've read stories how, you know, women should place themselves closer to the buttons. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's, I, I, that is, that's true. And I, I've heard that. Uh, I say that's true in the sense of like, I've right. heard that before. And then making sure that like your back is towards the wall and you don't have anybody like right behind you to avoid like groping and things like that. <laughs> oh man. So, so yeah, dude, don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> well, for me, mine was, I got trapped in an elevator. Right. 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 That's like a, right. an, an experience that you had where it's right. like, I read advice. You read advice. (laughs) Wow. See, that takes me down a different rabbit hole. Uh uh And and I was, which is interesting because right now I was sitting here thinking to myself, do I tell the story of why I, I said or wrote down what I said? Mm -hmm. Right. But if I share that story, will that cause somebody else to have a different perception when they go into the elevator next time? It's possible. Right. And it's also a choice, conscious or unconscious. It's also a choice. I know. Mm -hmm. But we have an impact on the choices we make do sometimes have impacts on others. Mm -hmm. And that just goes to show you that what we say also impacts each other. Exactly. Do you see how it's all connected? (laughs) Oh, were you just going to say that? Yes. (laughs) I was like, do you see how this is all connected? (laughs) Something as, as what seemingly small as a thought about. The inner workings of your brain when you get into an elevator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's so wild to me. I've definitely had those thoughts sometimes where I'm like, eh, I'm just going to take the stairs today. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've thought to myself, there, there was this one time. There was this one time I felt very validated where I always park on the fifth floor at work. Uh, in the parking garage. Okay. okay. I, I normally take the elevator down mostly because my right knee has been bothering me. And one day I was like, you're going to be brave. I know it's a hundred degrees outside and this stairwell is cased in glass with no AC, but you're going to do it. You're going to go down those stairs. You're going to you're going to get your steps in, you know, uh-huh. might not take it back up, but you're going down. Yeah. And yeah. so I did. And as I was going down, I think I got to the third floor And every time you, you know, make a round down Mm -hmm. the stairs, you see the elevator room Mm -hmm. right there at the entrance or the exit of the stairs. I got down to the third floor and there were three uh, elevator doors open and there was mechanics working on it. Yeah. And I was like, huh, the one time I decided to take the stairs because I just had a thought. I, I mean, intuition, man. We said it last time. Follow your intuition. Right. <laughs> Listen to Listen. that instinct. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> Isn't that wild? I was like, wow, that's felt, that felt very validating. I was like, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Synchronistic for sure. Yeah. It is interesting how we, how we're, you know, affected mm-hmm. easily. Easily. By, by what we experience and what we think and what we, what we read and hear from other people's experiences. It is interesting. Think of all the scenarios of when you just watch something on TV. Mm-hmm. The emotion. Now, now, granted, there's that's a goal. There's mm-hmm. a goal in what's being shared on to trigger emotions. Right. But how easily we are triggered by them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I know that that has, you know, for one person, it could like not affect them at all. For another person, it could make them ball or laugh or, or whatever reaction they have. Right. And normally those are mechanisms to pull some kind of an emotional heartstring because you mm-hmm. have an attachment to it of some sort. 
so that's why even this story that I'm sharing, even this thought process that I had could trigger a memory of thinking, uh, of just deciding, oh, you know, the last time I got into an elevator, here's what I thought of. Or no, the last time I got into an elevator, I was on the phone. I was completely distracted and not even thinking about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was thinking of the last time I was in an elevator and I was going to the dentist. <laughs> 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 and I was riding up the elevator and there was another woman in there with me and I said the wrong floor. So I got off on the wrong floor and that woman was in the dental office that I was going to, but you know, then because I got off on the wrong floor, I didn't want to wait for the elevator. I only had one more floor to go up. So I walked up the stairs and my dentist was in the stairs. And so I walked up with my dentist. <laughs> At least she got to know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love her. She's so fantastic. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I swear they make medical offices very confusing to, to navigate. Well, we only go once or twice a year. Like, like, where are you again? I know. Thank God for maps. <laughs> no kidding or pin drops yeah well the maps on the wall of the building you know oh, they tell you like the sweet numbers and that who, map who, yeah that map that map yeah i'm always blinded by that map for, for i some didn't reason. look at it that day <laughs> i got this i'm gonna yeah. wing it <laughs> still got off on the wrong floor that's fine that's fine <laughs> but maybe you were supposed to get off on the wrong floor so you would take the stairs right. so you would see your dentist and you would feel more comfortable being in his chair because you had a little chit chat on the way up her chair her and chair. um it i i am actually super comfortable with her we were sharing the recent fantasy books that we were reading so nice yeah, yeah. nice we have that in common so we were chatting about that up the stairs <laughs> so super side chat but i had a lady doctor uh -huh. Lady Parts Doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, a GYN. A GYN, thank you. Uh, and when I was a teenager, and I remember that every time I went into the office, every room when uh, you get on the, what do you call it, the bed, she had a, a poster of a hot guy, barely cladd <laughs> cladly dressed, may I add, a large one yeah. on the ceilings yeah. of every nice. room. So there was always a different one. That's so. way better than cats. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> sorry i just got <laughs> who does that that was not that was not intentional. <laughs> that's funnier than i thought it was gonna yeah. be. <laughs> speaking of cats <laughs> sorry super random but funny um <laughs> one of the doctors that i work with she was finishing her notes and she was trying to write fruits and veggies and she wrote have more veggies <laughs> Oh, no. Oops. <laughs> Don't forget to eat your veggies. <laughs> that happened. Oh. Please tell me that that note got sent. No, no, we, Darn. we caught it. Yeah. That's, that's unfortunate. Oh, we thought it. Yeah, we, we thought that, that to the right patient. That would have been great. <laughs> True. True. I guess it definitely depends. Yeah. Can you imagine if they were like, what's that? And they started Googling. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> At work. Mm. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what kind of made up shit is this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I lost my train of thought. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're going to beeline back to the path now. <laughs> just pretty do that. So <laughs> to me, what I find really impressive and really fascinating is that we all have these the, a shared experience. Most of us have been in an elevator. I I can't speak for all of us, but most of us most of us have been in an elevator, which means we've all experienced going in to a similar location and place, and we but we yet we all had a different thought, and yet it was in a neutral position, mm -hmm. right? Um, hoping for those that probably because there there could be somebody that's claustrophobic that their experience right. is absolutely terrifying right? right absolutely and so for all the reasons and so mm -hmm. for for me i do think that just to not harp on just the elevator specifically but the thought processes that we have and how we can bring those thought processes in observing our self-awareness in our own self behaviors and our mm -hmm. own self thoughts and how we treat ourselves in those thoughts. Because for me, my attempt at every time I'm 
going towards that elevator door right. is me knowing that I'm going in to face my own fear. Yeah. But I have a knowing of it because I have a self-awareness of my fear in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of just an exercise yeah. at that point. It's a, it's a daily exercise for me. Mm -hmm. So it makes me think about all the things that we can do as humans, <laughs> as a species, to better ourselves, to better take care of ourselves, to allow ourselves to become more aware mm -hmm. of how we react or how we process and how we think. And the more we get to know thyself in, in those types of ways of being, we kind of also help our root causes, right? Mm. We heal those root causes if it's not in a good way or whatnot. And if it's in a great way, right, whatever we define as good, right? Because it's a definition we've, we've given it. <laughs> but in some way, though, I also had the same thought about when I was a kid, and the first time I ever got into an elevator. Mm -hmm. And the wonder. And the wonder and the feeling of weightlessness. Mm -hmm. And so I try to take myself back to the awe-inspiring moments of the weightlessness mm -hmm. and the intrigue in how this technology was done. And this who was the person that created this, right? Yeah. I know that there's probably something I could Google there, but I haven't digressing. And I try to focus on that. Mm-hmm the childlike experience of being weightless in the air in a device that was man-made that is mm -hmm. really inspiring and instead of the fear. And that's what I take myself to. But it's just an example of one of the scenarios, right, on how many different ways you could do this with your life in different aspects of your life. As far as like choosing. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. I. I think like for me, what stood out the most was that that reminder that we don't all think the same. And mm -hmm. so being open to like being open right. and actually sharing what your thoughts are. And hopefully you are speaking to somebody that is, you know, open to just hearing you and rather than maybe laying into you or shaming you for thinking something different or maybe feeling incredulous that you have a different thought process. And so I, I think remembering to ask questions and being open to explaining and knowing that when people ask you questions like clarifying questions, it's not, it does, it's not necessarily an attack. I'm not saying it's not always not an attack, but maybe erring on the side of what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, the benefit of the doubt right. that that they are not attacking you, that they just want to understand better. And so hopefully that's that's what the experiences are or what we can create. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that one. The other one that I had in my head about the elevator scenario is the awareness of judgment of others. Mm -hmm. How often you stop at the next floor and somebody gets on and is there judgment are you having judgment towards the person that comes in? Oh, mm. that's an interesting choice of shoes. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Or, you know, uh, wow, that her hair is really pretty or his hair is really lovely <laughs> or something. I don't know. I'm making up stuff right now. But, um, well, but even like when you walk into an elevator, like my, my example where it was taking into account the people that are in there and trying to like understand your risk, being aware of those judgments too. Yeah. You know, yeah. not saying that you shouldn't be aware of the risks around you, but, you know, just also being aware of that judgment doesn't mean you have to change anything. It's just getting to know yourself. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. that, that's exactly it. The getting to know yourself part mm -hmm. and with awareness becomes the potential of change and progress. Right. If, if you, you want choose to. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're so on it today, man. We're just like, yeah. <laughs> You know what I want right now? Oh, food. Yeah, dinner. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about you, but I'm freaking hungry. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> you say it. <laughs> And on that note, <laughs> hit the like, subscribe, notification bells. It really helps our channel grow, and we really do appreciate it. <laughs> we have social media. Yes, we do. We've got YouTube Shorts. We've got 
Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Guess what else we have? We have a website. Hey. There it is. Lovealwayshelp.com. <laughs> go check it out. Definitely go check it out. And if you haven't been on our website before, just so you know, we have a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's one of our favorite things. Mm -hmm. Carrie made it. It's fantastic. I actually have it in my office and I do use it. Um, we also have, when we do do our card readings uh, here on our episodes, which I know we haven't done in a while, please forgive us. Um, but we have all of the tarot decks and oracle decks that we use listed on our website as well. If you do choose to utilize any of those links, they are affiliates. We do receive a little bit of kickback and only goes right back to this channel and mm -hmm. costs you extra nothing. So thank you for you doing that, for supporting us. <laughs> All right, that was a mouthful of shit. <laughs> a mouthful of shit. <laughs> <laughs> a mouthful of goodies. A there mouthful go. of goodies. There you, you go. Know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, thank y'all so much for being here today. We appreciate you and love you. And don't forget to love first, love last, and love always. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everybody. <laughs>